Hello everyone. Good morning. Uh, first of all, warm welcome to OIC training by Unogeeks. In this video, I'll show you how a versioning of integrations works in OIC. Okay, so whenever you create an integration, integration gets created with a default version number, which is 1.0.0. And a version in an integration has three parts to it. It's major dot a minor dot patch. So if you log into OIC instance and try to create a new integration, pick up any style, it doesn't matter. Try to create a new one and you see that a version is getting defaulted to 1.0.0. So if you put your mouse in version field, you see a description there, right? So it has three parts a major dot minor dot patch version and, and and the total length should not exceed 10 characters. So by default, whenever you create an integration, it will have a version of 1.0, okay? And when do you normally create a new version for an integration? So say, for example, you've built, the, you've built a service. Say, for example, let's pick up an example. Okay, let's say uh, you've, you've created this, uh, this GL daily rates import. Okay, GL daily rates uh, automation, uh, import automation service. And you've delivered this service to the client and they've tested it and they said it's working fine. But tomorrow they have come back and said that uh, and asked you to make uh, some change in the integration. And that change could be a minor change or it could be a major change or a complex change. So in such case, uh, whenever you have a delivered as uh, delivered a service and it's certified as working fine and if you get get back a new change one obvious option, uh, approach is to edit the edit the uh, version that you have delivered 1.0.0 edit it make the changes and ask them to test it again but what is the downside with that approach it could be that you so if, if there is some problem in the changes that you have done you will not have at least a working copy available right so that's why uh, you will not have any version to fall back to. So in such cases, so that's why whenever you get a new change or to an integration that's already delivered, you make those new changes by creating a new version. So how do you create a new version for an integration? You pick the service, you click on the menu option and you click on create new version. And when you create a new version for your integration, you can create a new patch version by incrementing the patch bit, or you can create a new minor version by incrementing the minor version, or you can create a major version as well. Now the question is when to create a patch minor or a major version? Who will tell me that I need to create a major version or a minor or a patch version? As an integration specialist, it will be your responsibility to take that call. And the thumb rule is in case the changes that you're doing are minor or, or small changes, which you are pretty sure that uh, will not break the functionality. In such case, you can go ahead and create either a minor version or a patch version. We usually don't, uh, don't uh, use patch version. So we typically use a minor version. So if it's a small change that the client has asked you to make in this service, you go ahead and increment the patch, uh, the minor version, and you create it. And so you, you see the version number now changed from 1.0 to 1.1. And you edit this integration, you make the minor change that client has asked you to do, and you activate this service. So first let me activate 1.0. Okay, let me just activate it and leave it like that. There is a reason why I'm doing this. And after I activate 1.0, uh, okay, I have created this 1.1 version as well, right? So uh, I've built this 1.0 version, delivered it to the client, they, they confirmed it is working fine. But later on, they asked me to make some minor changes for which I created this 1.1 version. And I've made changes in this 1.1 version and I want to activate this now. And when I try to activate this 1.1, you notice a one warning message appearing. 
appearing at the bottom. So these options are fine. Uh, these, uh, these options you get every time you try to activate a service. But if you look at this warning message, it says activating 1.1 requires deactivating 1.0. And, and, the, and the reason why this should happen is why 1.0 needs to be deactivated to activate 1.1 is the answer lies in the URL. So if you look at if you look at the URL, okay. So if you probably I picked up a wrong example. So if you uh, take for example, say if you take this Hello World REST API, or say the, this Hello World you know Gates Hello World REST API. Let's activate the service. Okay and a 1.0 i'll create a new version for this and i'll create it as a minor version created and when i try to activate 1.1 you should see the same warning message again 1.1 act to activate 1.1 1.0 needs to be deactivated and the reason is if you look at the api uh, uh, api endpoint so if you if you click on run you see a metadata URL there, right? So you click on it. You see you see the URL that is generated or the endpoint URL. The endpoint URL has has a version number in it, and this version number is a major version number. It, 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 the version number in the endpoint URL doesn't include minor or patch. It, it only includes a major version. So now you have a one. You have this URL with a major version 1.0, and that is pointing to that is pointing to this 1.0 version. So if you send in a request to this URL, it will be answered by this 1.0 version. But when you try to activate 1.1, so what is a major version for 1.1? It is also 1.0, right? So the major version for 1.0.0 and 1.1.0 is one. The major version is 1.0. So even if you activate 1.1, the URL will still remain the same because the major version of 1.1 is also 1.0, right? And since you cannot have the same URL, point to two different versions, okay? Since you cannot have same URL point to, or pointing to two different versions, that's why OIC will force you to deactivate uh, the or OIC, when it tries to activate a new minor version, it will deactivate the previous version. Okay, because, because uh, URL can point to uh, only one particular version, right? So that's why. So if I try to activate 1.1 now, which is a minor version, activate it. And what do you see? 1.1 activated and 1.0 has been changed to configured state. And if you look at the endpoint URL generated, click on the metadata, you notice that there is absolutely no change in the endpoint URL because this major version is same for 1.1 and 1.0. So this is how the minor versioning works. And patch version also works the same way. So if you uh, if you have if you had created this as a patch version, it would have been 1.0.1 .1 instead of 1.1.0. Okay, but when you activate patch version also, you will get the same warning message that it, that you need to deactivate the previous um, previous version that is active, and and that's how the uh, the minor version works, patch or minor version, and you will use this only when the changes are minor, are relatively minor in nature, and how do you create a patch version? If you increment the patch bit 1.0.1, it creates a patch version. If you increment the minor version 1.1, it becomes a minor version, and when you activate a minor version. 1.0 or 1.0 or 1.0.1 1.0 needs to be deactivated because you only have major version number in the url and let's say the changes you've got are pretty complex and and there is a chance that uh, the service itself might uh, might break so in such cases you will create the change you will create a major version and you will start working on those uh, complex changes and the benefit you get by creating a major version is since uh, when you try to activate a major version, it will not force you to deactivate uh, the previous version. So if you try to, uh, if you create a new major version like 2.0 or 
uh, say for example, if you create 2.0 and try to activate it, it will not force you to deactivate 1.0 because there is no need, right? Uh, the major version number is different and the URL that gets generated when you activate 2.0 will be different from 1.0. Okay, so in 1.0, you would have 1.0 in the URL. In 2.0 version, you will have 2.0. So there was no need to deactivate 1.0. And this benefit or this helps this helps you to make the changes without uh, without uh, without any fear because if even if the uh, version 2.0 uh, fails so you you make the changes you release 2.0 for testing client identified some issue which you could not figure out during the unit testing and uh, it might take at least a week for you to fix so during that week's time you can ask the client to keep sending their request to 1.0 which was which was at least working fine earlier right of course, they might not have that uh, new additional functionality. Okay, so that's so that's a benefit of creating a major version. And how do you create a major version? You can pick up 1.0 and you click on create new version. And you can increment the major version number. So you can change it to 2.0, create version. And when you try to activate 2.0, a major version, you don't see that warning message anymore and you can activate the service. And when you activate a major version, the URL that gets generated will be different. If you look at the endpoint URL that is generated, it has 2.0 in it. Okay, so this is the benefit of creating a major version. If you create a major version, you can have a multiple versions of the service activate at the same time. So in case something fails in the new major version that you created, you have a fallback option. Okay, so this is how a versioning works in integrations work area in OIC. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. In case you are interested in Oracle integration cloud training offered by Uno Geeks, please call us on this number or send a WhatsApp message. And you can also send us uh, an email at info at greatunogeeks.com or you can visit our website to uh, check out the course content. Thank you.